Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers and welcome to another episode in this Landscape Material series. Today we're looking at adding tiling variation to our landscape, so rotating and scaling the textures so they don't appear to go in a straight line into the distance. Let's get straight into it. In the last episode we added colour variation to our landscape and in today's tutorial we're going to look at adding uh, tiling variation. So you can see in the landscape in this ground layer here that it's fairly obvious that these textures are repeating. You can see this clump of stones here. It's going off in a straight line into the distance and there's a parallel line there and a parallel line here. So in order to break up that obvious repetition what we're going to do is we're going to put in some material functionality to ro randomly rotate the textures at various points so that's not so obvious. Uh, make sure as always you've caught up to this point by following the playlist below and uh, let's get into how we do this rotation of the texture tiles. So if you go into your, we'll, we'll, we'll do a material function for this and I'll explain as we go what we're using. So go into your content browser, find your materials folder and your material functions folder and we'll create a new material function here. And we'll call it MF tiling variation. And open that up. And if you right click and search for a node called texture variation, there is a node that Epic provide for you that pretty much does everything you want. So it has various inputs here. And what it's actually doing is it's taking in the UV coordinates. So you remember we had UV coordinates for our near tiling, UV coordinates for our far tiling. And then it's spitting out shifted UVs that have been rotated round. So uh, this pretty much does all the heavy lifting. And because it just does UV transformations, it's pretty um, cost effective as well. Uh, we're not actually shifting the pixels around. We're then putting the textures in the right place based on the UVs. So we need to plug some inputs and outputs here. So let's plug the shifted UVs into the output. And we'll call that output shifted UVs and we'll need an input as well so right click here and do input and we will call that input just UVs and make sure it is a vector 2 because UVs are two dimensional coordinates and then plug that into your UVs. Now there are various other um, inputs here uh, the important ones to drive the variation are the variation scale and variation levels. So let's create a couple of parameters for that. So if you remember, press S on the keyboard, left click to create a scalar parameter. And we'll do here random tiling scale and make it a value of three again we can play with those in a minute these are just ones that I found that work pretty well so put that into the variation scale duplicate this and call this one random tiling levels and I found a value of one's a good starting point for this and plug that into the variation levels uh, we're not going to do anything with height map on this um, we're going to leave the default values for most of these, but the random rotation scale, uh, we definitely want to apply random rotation and scale. So create a new static Boolean, set that to true and plug that into here so that it applies the uh, rotation scale that we want. Uh, last thing to do on this is we'll create a new group for the parameters. So if you pick these ones here, and in the group, let's create one called landscape tiling variation. And we'll apply or assign that to the other parameter as well. OK, so we now have this function. Uh, what we want to do is we want to plug this in where we process our uh, UVs per material layer. So click on save here. 
go back to your main landscape and let's go into this so now we've created our new material function we need to apply it to the uvs in the create layer function so go to your master material and double click on uh, the mf create layer in one of your layers and this is where we did the uh, creation of the tiling for the base color and the normal so what we want to do is we want to uh, add this function here where we're uh, plugging in our uvs so let's just move the uv comment back here give us a little bit more space and actually let's move it up because we'll probably make it bigger as well to ac to accommodate the parameters we'll put in later so something like this and if you go back to your content browser, find your MF tiling variation function and drag it in. We can plug it in between the unchanged UVs and then plug that out into near UV. And then we want to do the same again. Um, by the way, if you select a group of nodes and press Q, it lines them up. So let's uh, duplicate that one, plug it in here. and line it up and that will now have ad adapted the uvs uh, to these rotated and scaled ones so if we save that and go back up to your main landscape and also save that to apply it and if you come back to the main material you'll notice if you look at the ground that now those um, uh, stony textures forest path texture at the bottom is all rotated round so there's those stone groups are now in random patterns not no longer straight in parallel lines and to show it uh, in even more stark contrast if you go to the ground layer and press the reset button on the texture and the normal so you go back to the grid pattern you can see here exactly what has happened what it's doing is it's taking uh, random areas using a noise texture and it is rotating them around randomly uh, at different scales and it's even happening in the far texture as well if I zoom out a bit you can see it's happening there as well um, and if we go down a bit more in the material instance you can see the new um, the new parameters that we added the random tiling levels random tiling scale remember I set them to three and one if you change those, I mean, let's change the random tiling scale, for example, if as you put it up, you can see that the areas which it rotates get larger. And similarly, if you go down, they get smaller. So three was a sweet spot for me. You might, uh, your mileage might vary on that. And then the tiling levels really affects the amount of um, rotation that happens. So again, you can play around with those and see what works for you. Again, I found a value, value of one seemed to get a nice uh, randomness of rotation. You may also notice if you're eagle-eyed that there's this new uh, group that's appeared. So that texture variation node has all sorts of other values within the node as well. So you can go in there and play around with those like the variation pattern, um, offsets and stripes. Um, they, they have subtle effects on the way that that works so again play around with those and they gives you some extra controls as well all right so let's go back to um, the landscape and what we want to do now is we don't always want to apply uh, the variation even though it's not terribly expensive to use in the material we might want the option to switch it on and off uh, for the near and far tiling in each layer so let's now parameterize that uh, tiling variation so that you have options to switch on and off that's quite simple to do so come back to the um, create layer here and now what we want to do is add in a couple of new um, inputs to a boolean input to switch this on and off so what I'll do is I will create new input and we will call it um, near tile in fact sorry add near tiling variation so it's a toggle on and off and make sure that you set the input type to static boolean we will use that 
as a switch over here. So let's just move these back a bit. Right click in empty space and create a new um, static switch. Plug the Boolean in here. If it's true, then we want our shifted UVs. If it's false, we want the unchanged UVs here. So something like that. So again, just that's why I created some extra space here. So move things around as you need to to tidy them up. And we now want to have the same thing for the far UVs. So let's create a bit of extra space below here. And let's duplicate these two nodes. Control D. Plug the true in out of the tiling variation and the false from the UVs prior to going into the tiling variation. And we want to call this second one add far tiling variation. And last thing we want to do in this um, function is we want to have a, a default value for these. So if um, we don't plug anything into this. We want to have it switched off by default. So what we'll do is we'll create another static Boolean, just a standalone one. It's set to false by default. And let's plug that into the preview of both of these and make sure both of these are set to use preview value. That way you won't need to plug anything in and it will by default just use the standard UVs and not go through the tiling variation. OK, so click on save here. Now we need to um, add these to the master material. So if you go back to the um, actually, let's look at the sort order as well. Um, so the near UV was five. Let's make the near tiling variation six. The far UV seven and the far tiling variation eight. Let's see what that looks like on the main material. Okay, so the only, only thing is the depth fade mask is sort of in between them at the moment. So go back to the crate layer, find the depth fade mask down here, which was seven, and make that nine. OK, and now we have got these two new booleans here. So near UV, then a, a boolean for do we want to add variation, far UV, and do we want to add variation. So if you don't plug anything into these by default, it won't do the tiling variation. So you can choose whether you want to add them to all the layers. Let's just do it for the ground layer um, to make sure it works. And then you can add them to the other layers as well if you want. So I'm going to just uh, create a little extra space in this comment box, move that up a bit, move the depth fade mask down a bit. And now we'll create two new parameters here. So they are going to be um, static bool parameters. First one is going to be add ground near tiling variation and uh, put that into the ground group um, thinking of the sort order so the near the last one ground normal intensity we've then got let's look at the material instance we've then got the slope constraint after that so that will be five so this one wants to be six and then duplicate that and call it add ground far tiling variation. And that's going to be seven. And then we will plug those into the inputs here. OK, and now if we click on save, no errors everything looks okay i've by default i've left those as false as well so if we come back to the landscape you can see that it is back to the um, 
unrotated and scaled textures and over on the uh, material instance you've got two new parameters here so add near ground to near tiling variation add ground far tiling variation so if we click on the near tiling variation you can see that it applies the variation to the foreground and if we click on the far tiling it also applies it to the background as well so now we can go back to our original textures so come up to the textures and choose your forest path base color and the forest path normal and now we have a nice variation not only of the color variation which we did in the last episode but also of the textures so we no longer see those uh, rocks going in a straight line into the distance so again we've we've enhanced the uh, realism and variety for the eye um, so that's it for today's episode uh, you can add those um, attribute those parameters to the other layers if you want as well those two new ones just copy them and uh, plug them into the other layers changing the name to mid low mid high etc in the next episode we'll look at adding a water puddle function to each material layer uh, so that allows you to create water puddles of varying sizes and strength and further break up sort of large swathes of empty space so stay tuned for that and i'll see you in the next one bye for now